So we did have some surprising news this week, Keith. Edgar Berlanga, the undefeated super middleweight contender, he has parted ways with top rank. Uh, some of the shine, of course, has come off Berlanga. He had a whole bunch of first-round knockouts early in his career. Uh, he's won all his fights since that knockout streak ended, but he was knocked down in one of them in his last fight against Roma Rangulo. He bit him, which led to a multi-month suspension. Um, but Berlanga is a proven ticket seller, and guys like that are not usually released uh, by their promoters. So, Keith, let's start here. What's your understanding of what happened with Edgar Berlanga and Top Rank? Well, ultimately, they just couldn't come to an understanding or an agreement, Chris, on what he should be paid, uh, the types of fights that he should be in in 2023, whether he should be in main events or co-features and that was viewed from their standpoint as a step backward because he has headlined ESPN shows at the theater and they were trying to build toward him. I don't know about selling out Madison square garden, but being able to do a substantial gate at Madison, the big room at Madison square garden. And this went on for several months. Uh, he was suspended for six months. As you well know, Chris, he, you know, he tried to bite uh, Sangulo on his shoulder in his last fight. So he couldn't fight for, from, basically mid-June until mid-December anyway. So uh, during that time, they had a couple of face-to-face -face meetings uh, in which Berlanga was involved. Uh, his manager, Keith Connolly, was there. Uh, his, his dad and his trainer uh, also there. Um, and, you know, and the top-ranked brass was there. And there were times when it looked like they were going to figure it out. And then there were times when they were at odds and they, and they were not going to figure it out. And ultimately, he was able to buy himself out of the contract. Uh, he felt uh, his team, him and his team kind of felt like top rank didn't believe in him. Um, you could argue on the flip side that he hadn't given them much reason to believe in, in him being more than what he is now based on the way he performed against Alexis Angulo and Steve Rolls. He won those fights. I mean, there, there was no two ways about that. It was just the way he looked. And then how would you step him up from there? Uh, that they really couldn't come to an agreement on. And frankly, you know, they wanted him to fight Jesse Hart three times. Mm -hmm. And that name kept coming up. Now, I, Jesse Hart's a, a solid fighter uh, who's done well in his career. He, he was very competitive in those two super middleweight title, title fights against Gilberto Ramirez. Uh, he's, not, he's not an elite level fighter. And there was a refusal on the side of Berlanga to fight him. So it was frustrating for top rank. Uh, because they felt like if you're not going to fight Jesse Hart and prove yourself against a guy who, frankly, is a back end of that. He's not even in that. You know, he's fought at light heavyweight and everything, and now he would move back down to 168 for that fight. But if you're not going to fight Jesse Hart and you're utterly refusing to do that, well, you're you're going to disagree, you know. So I, I don't – but I see it from Berlanga's standpoint. You know, he is a ticket seller. He's a commodity. Um but some of the shine has come off him since he's gone the distance in these last four fights and hasn't looked particularly great. He got knocked down in the fight against Coceres on the uh, Wilder Fury undercard. Uh, he did he did fight through a torn biceps for seven rounds of that fight. So I kind of, well, you know, that that's tough. He was able to do that. And it was a flash knockdown. He got up. He won the fight convincingly. But, you know, they just didn't see the type of progress in him that they had hoped to see. And frankly, they did not want to pay him the type of money that he was uh, that he thought he should command based on his popularity and and his uh, ability to sell tickets. And they decided to go their separate ways. The Jesse Hart thing was strange. I, I mean, I, I had people, as, as I'm sure you did from Berlanga's team, calling to say it's not about Jesse Hart. He would have fought Jesse Hart. But, you know, I, I've heard the same things you have, that Top Rank has repeatedly tried to make a fight between Berlanga and Jesse Hart, and it hasn't come together for <laughs> whatever reason uh you know and and on paper doesn't that fight make a lot of sense like you know jesse hart if he can make 168 i have some skepticism of that but if jesse hart could make 168 again and, and be there for that fight that's a good next step type of fight a former world title challenger who's a known commodity because of the fights he had with gilberto ramirez because of the fight he had with Joe Smith didn't win any of those fights, but you know, it was competitive. And at least in the two Ramirez fights and um, wound up uh, on, you know, nationally televised kind of platforms It just, do you think it was the money for that? Or they just don't believe he's, he's ready or he can, can win that kind of fight. 
Yeah, but, but again, if you if you don't believe that he can win against Jesse at this point in Jesse Hart's career, well, you're going to come to an impasse because that's a type of guy that he should be, you know, and they wouldn't fight him. So I know Berlanga has said that he would fight him, and, you know, the fighters always, for the most part, the fighters aren't uh, shying away from challenges. I'm sure he feels like he can beat Jesse Hart, but from a business standpoint, they wouldn't do it. Um, and again, they just decided that they wanted different things and they wanted to go about the rest of his career in the foreseeable future in, in different ways. Um, and he was able to buy himself out of the contract. So, uh, he'll have some options because there are a lot of super middleweights with PBC or less super middleweights with Eddie Hearn, but Keith Connolly, uh, Berlanga's manager has a good working relationship with Eddie Hearn also has a good working relationship with Al Heyman. So he'll have some options, but eventually you're going to have to fight somebody eventually, you know, and, and, and Ngulo was a big puncher, but you know, it was dominated by David Benavidez. Um, you know, he's going to have to, he's, he's ranked fourth by, I think three of the four major sanctioning organizations. So he's a highly ranked fighter and everything, but look, if he goes and, and signs with PBC, Chris, you put him in the ring with the, with, Plant, Benavidez, uh, David Morrell, Charlo, if he moved up. I don't see him winning any of those fights. Do you? No, I think he'd be an underdog based on what I've seen uh, of his last few fights. Um, you know, and, and that kind of brings me to to the next point. And, and you kind of touched on the options there. There is PBC. There is Matchroom. Keith Conley, his manager, is steering the ship now. I think Golden Boy is kind of a dark horse in all this and maybe you can do this via match room as well but you know i, I i'm sure there'd be strong interest in jaime munguia versus edgar berlanga like and we're gonna get to jaime munguia later in the show but um you know munguia berlanga is a potential fun fight and if you're berlanga you know I, I think you'd probably take that because there's probably considerable money in that fight and you, you should feel you can be competitive against munguia who has not been tested either at this point and a smaller guy moving up you know he's not Berlang is a big guy, so um, so yeah. I mean, I, why not, right? I mean, ultimately, he wants to fight Canelo. Now, no one would tell you with a straight face that they think Edgar Berlang will beat Canelo Alvarez, but he's a marketable guy. He's popular. Um, not he's not Miguel Cotto popular. You know, he he's developing a fan base, and he is very he has a big social media presence and all that, and people have reacted. You know entertainers and athletes have have responded to him knocking people out he doesn't knock people out anymore exactly but but he is popular and he's a real confident kid and the puerto rican fans have responded to him look if canelo were looking for a fight where he would be heavily favored to win beyond john Ryder, um Berlanga would be someone that he would be heavily favored to beat and he's undefeated and he's ranked fourth by three of the four sanctioning organizations. So I'm not saying that fight should happen. I'm just saying that if Canelo were looking to come back from wrist surgery against someone that he would be heavily favored to beat and is undefeated and all the things that I just said, well, Berlanga would be that type of guy.